Good morning, everyone. Um, I really, truly, from my heart, appreciate all of you being here today to talk about something that is very important to our community, to our state, and especially to the new Delawareans that are seeking refuge and safety here in Delaware. Uh, the reason why we're here today, oh, I should tell you my name. Sorry, John. My name is Basha Silverman. I am the CEO of Jewish Family Services of Delaware. We are a nonprofit social service agency that's been around for 120 years. While Jewish is in our name, we serve everyone. Uh, we do this because we are compelled to welcome the stranger. And we have been resettling refugees and serving immigrants for 100 years. Uh, I just got here, don't clap for me. Um, so uh, I just wanted to tell you why we're here today. Uh, our president signed an executive order this fall requiring every single state to opt in to resettling refugees in their state. So that means if the states don't opt in, then individuals seeking refuge and safety and security in this free country will not be able to enter and resettle in that state. This is enormous for America. There are 65 million people displaced as a result of an international refugee crisis going on right now. And if America and each state doesn't lead the way for our world, who will? We are lucky here in Delaware, our governor has opted in. Uh, we have a letter uh, written to Secretary Pompeo. However, additional challenges and hurdles have been created um, since then, uh, requiring uh, all of the local municipalities, county execs, and mayors to also opt in. So that's why we're here today. Thank you to Mayor Prusicki. Uh, thank you to Matt Meyer for leading the, uh, the way here in Delaware. And we are hopeful that mayors all over this state uh, will sign on. Uh, this is so, so vital and important and critical that we welcome these new Americans, these new Delawareans, our new neighbors. Um, I really appreciate your support. I'm done, right? <laughs> All right, good morning. Good morning. It's, uh, you probably won't see it in the TV cameras, but it, there's a really big crowd here. We, when we put together a press conference, we often don't get this many people, and it's really a testament to our community, uh, to a lot of the community leadership, people like Basha, I see Erica Gutierrez, Cody Owens, and so many others who are around here leading the way to make sure that we all come out and say this is important. On a personal note, among the most important things that I do, and I know that Mayor Perzicki does, and elected officials across our, our state and our country, is we look for those that don't have a seat at the table. Look for those that don't have a voice, that don't have the resources to come to big fundraisers, and don't have my cell phone number, uh, and, and, and don't have a say in policy. Um, and to make sure that they do have a voice and they do have an equal seat at the table. And that's something that our country prides itself in, that we look across this world and we find those who are in most need and we say, come here, you are welcome here. You do not need to be persecuted on this earth. This is a land of opportunity for all, regardless of the color of your skin, what religion you hold in your heart, what your sexual orientation is, how people treat your gender or your gender identity in the country in which you live. And that is among the things that we, sh among the things that we should be most proud. 80 years ago, 80 years ago, on a, 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 a more than 900 Jews fled Nazi Germany on a ship called the MS St. Louis. They were turned away from Cuba and diverted towards Miami. As they headed towards Miami, the United States Coast Guard met them. Uh, and the United States Coast Guard ordered them not to land on American soil. They were sent back to Europe, where many ended up in concentration camps, and of the 900 individuals on that ship, 254 are documented to have been murdered in the Holocaust. 
We've been vowing since I was a kid and long before then that never again will we be complicit in the face of unspeakable horror. That vow comes with a great responsibility to stand up against evil and a duty to take, to take in those who flee, or, who flee violence, war, and persecution. We're here today to stand up to a president who turns away refugees, who scapegoats immigrants and governs with selfish cowardice instead of compassion. We're here today to send a message to our president and to those across our country that we will continue to house community, to house refugees here in our community uh, in Wilmington, in Newcastle County, across our state, and as much as possible across our country. Not only will we house them, we will welcome them. And we will welcome them because refugees make us stronger. They're among the most patriotic members of our community. Imagine that if you or your parent, your sister, your brother had an opportunity to flee awful, life-threatening conditions and had an opportunity to come here in America and make it, to be given an equal shot. They're among the hardest working members of our society. Many ultimately serve and family members serve as police officers, as nurses, as teachers in our school, in legal, office, legal offices and engineering firms. After I graduated college, I was in a program called Teach for America. I taught in a, a neighborhood in, in uh, Washington, D.C., in the Anacostia neighborhood of Washington, D.C. The teacher next door to me was a sixth grade teacher. She had fled a war in Sierra Leone. And as a grandmother, a woman named Hilda Taylor, as a grandmother, she was determined to make sure kids across Washington, D.C. had the same opportunity to see the world that she had. She enrolled her students in all sorts of National Geographic opportunities. On September 11, 2001, she was on a plane heading towards a conference in San Francisco with one of my students, with one of her students. And that plane crashed into the Pentagon. There's tremendous, tremendous leadership being shown by refugees, family members of refugees across our country. There is no reason we should be turning them away. And I am proud, and I know the mayor is proud, to be here today. The governor wanted to be here today for us to stand up and say, these are people across, their, this, across this world who, when they need a place of refuge, they are welcome here in Newcastle County. Thank you. Well done, Matt. I, um, I appreciate those very heartfelt remarks. I, um, I'm often asked, I, well, first of, all, first of all, it strikes me that it is a pity that we even have to be here today. And that's the first thought I had uh, when I was asked to come here. I'm often asked uh, how uh, I see our city. And I tease them, I said, you know, we've been the chemical ca capital, the credit card capital, the corporate capital, and that's how we always saw ourselves. And I said, you know, I think the way I see Wilmington, I see it as a just city. Somebody came to us uh, six months ago and talked about what a just city was, and I embraced it because it was, it was so meaningful to me. But you could all fill in the blanks of what you would imagine a just city is. A just city is a place where prosperity is available to everybody. A just city is where all of our children get educated at the same level, with the same resources. A just city is where our police officers think of themselves as guardians, not necessarily as the tough guys. And so we go through all these elements of what a just city is, and I, I know we're getting there. It's a slow journey, but I know we're getting there. But we could not conceivably fashion ourselves as a just city if we said that the doors are closed to our immigrants. That the doors are closed to people who create the foundational principles of our America, of my grandparents, of so many of our forebears, who really fit the description in any stretch of any definition of the word of immigrants, who people who came here who were treated like the other. And it's painful for many of us to have to watch this. And as I said when I got up here, it's when John Rago said to me, here's what we're doing uh, today or tomorrow, I just thought, what a pity that we actually have to go through this exercise to say, yes, we, as if we were an, an exception, we want immigrants in this city. We have to affirmatively say something that seems just so fundamental to who we are. So I'm happy to be here. 
Uh, Basha, beautifully well done. She said she was very nervous about it. I thought she was great. Matthew, eloquent as always. You can always tell Matt from me, I only say good morning once. Matt always says it twice. <laughs> anyway, I'm so happy to have all of you here joining us. I'm very proud to be a part of this, uh, this little exercise uh, that is a, um, a statement, I think, of who we are. And I'm proud to be with these folks up here. Thank you.